Okay, so now we're going to talk about the fundamental theorem of algebra. And the fundamental theorem of algebra says if you have some function, some polynomial function, and it has, you know, degree n, you know, and it goes like this down to a sub 0, then there, as long as n, oops, sorry about that, as long as n is greater than 0, so you don't have a constant function, but if n is greater than 0, then there is at least one complex 0. Now by complex, they mean it could be a complex number. Okay, so that includes the set of numbers that we know, all your real numbers and your imaginary numbers. Okay, um, so what we can say is, well, if we know there's a zero, so let's say you have x minus k as a zero, well now if you divided that out, then you have a sub n minus 1, x to the n minus 1, plus and then there's some new constant there, right? And you could keep dividing those out. Um, let me give you a little more concrete example. So let's say you have g of x is equal to, you know, 3x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus 7x squared plus 5, or something like that. And so you find some 0, x minus k. Then the next polynomial that, it time, that, you know, when you divide that out, you're going to have x cubed, 3x cubed, plus, and then there's going to be some x squared term, plus some x term, plus, you know, a new constant. And then you could find a factor for that, a 0, because it's, the degree is bigger than 1, so you'd have x minus k, and then you'd have x minus, I don't know, uh, m, and then you'd have an x squared term, you know, and then you'd have, and you could keep doing that till you got it all factored, right? Okay, so the only thing that's different than what we're saying is, um, we're going to write this just a little bit different. We're saying f of x can be written as, now I'll come back to this first part, but x minus k sub 1 times x minus k sub 2 times x minus k sub 3, dot, dot, dot. Um, as many polynomials as there are, I guess I should have gone with n because we had an n degree polynomial, um, x minus k sub n. <laughs> okay, that many polynomials for your degree. And there are n zeros, or roots, if you include, if you include multiplicity. Because kind of, we have to throw that in for those multiple roots. So if you have a fifth degree polynomial, you're going to have five zeros, if you include the multiplicity, because they could double up. The only thing that's different than what I have written in is that there could be some constant multiple that you factored out from the beginning. You could have some uh, constant there. Okay. And I think this is really what we want to say. Okay. So let's go to an example. Find the zeros of f of x equals, and then it gives us this polynomial. Well. It, you can do your p over q thing and synthetic division, but it turns out this one actually factors. So I'm going to go ahead and factor it. So I'm going to factor out 3x squared, and I'll have x plus 3 plus 1 times x plus 3. And so I'm going to factor this into x plus 3 and 3x squared plus 1. Okay. Now, our theorem that we just did, the fundamental theorem of algebra, says we have to have three roots, okay? And we're going to include multiplicity. Okay. Well, I can see one root. One root's going to be negative three, or one zero, so zeros. Put them over here. 
I know I'm going to have negative 3 as a 0, but what do I do about this? Well, that's quadratic, and we know how to solve it. So we're saying, when does 3x squared plus 1 equal 0? Well, I can put the 1 on the other side. So this is back to our techniques that we used where we um, solved quadratic equations. I can divide both sides by 3. And I'm going to run out of room. So I get x squared equals negative 1 third. But then I can take the square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus or minus. And so I get x equals plus or minus um, i. <laughs> and then the square root of 1 third. Now, if you want me to rationalize that, I can. So I actually get my negative 3 is a 0. And then I have another 0 of negative i square root 3 over 3 and another 0, i, square root 3 over 3. Now they might, in the book, they might leave it the square root of 1 third, I don't know. But those are the zeros. I have three of them. That's what I was expecting. I'm not going to get four. Can't have more than three. Um, and it turns out that two of them have imaginary parts in there. They might put the i at the back if they were doing a plus bi form as well. But anyway, that's one way you could write them.